All right, um, looks like we're good to go. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for staying with us till the end of the day. This is Hey Storage Engineer, tell me about backups in OpenStack. Wait, Akshay, uh, is this for storage engineers, this session? No, this session, we are supposed to be the storage engineers. Uh, you may or may not be storage engineers in the audience. Um, you're, we'll be providing you information around backups as applied to OpenStack infrastructure. Thanks. So these guys just need to know OpenStack, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So my name is Akshay Parthasarathy. I'm a technical marketing engineer at NetApp. You can see my Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn details over there. Um, I've been in the technology industry for over seven years now, having previously worked at Dell and Amazon Web Services. I'm joined today by Kapil Arora. Kapil, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Yeah, my name is Kapil, and I'm a cloud platform architect at NetApp. I've been with NetApp for around six years, and in my current role, I'm helping customers do proof of concepts or implementations around OpenStack, and also help them integrate our enterprise storage within OpenStack. Awesome, thanks couple. Okay, moving on. Uh, we're gonna be showing you a couple of uh, use cases and what we wanna mention as you look through the demos is these were done in a proof of concept deployment for the sake of preparing the demos, not necessarily uh, done, uh, not necessarily the same things that would be true in production. Our agenda, uh, we'll start with the exciting stuff, which is two use cases and demos. Uh, the first use case is going to be with Cinder block storage, and I'll walk you through 10 VMs uh, with Nova and Cinder. And this is going to uh, be, be it on a VDI environment or otherwise, it's going to use Cinder. The second use case Kapil is going to walk you through is using Manila with SAP HANA as the enterprise application. Manila is the file share storage project uh, in OpenStack. After that, we'll take you through what is a backup and why you should be backing up following replication and disaster recovery. And finally, Couple is going to close off with some application design goals uh, for backup and recovery. So onward and forward, we're going to look at tenant PM's backup uh, with Nova and Cinder. So this is our first use case. Now, this could be in a VDI environment or otherwise, uh, typically you might have, as an IT administrator, you might have um, you know, a lot of tenants in your OpenStack infrastructure taking advantage of that self-service provisioning that OpenStack avails for you, in, adv in addition to the cost advantages. So you, know, you see here uh, an OpenStack infrastructure. On the right-hand side, on, the left, on your left-hand side, uh, you see uh, some generic compute nodes. Maybe you're using commodity hardware with local disks. We want to suggest an alternative to you, uh, which is you can use an enterprise storage backend, such as NetApp, uh, for your sender. And what this allows you to do, especially in the case of NetApp's, uh, NetApp Solid Fire, it'll give you that capability to do that live migration of your uh, tenant VM instances. Uh, in addition to that, you can use Glance Image Glance images on your enterprise storage backend, and that gives you that deduplication, uh, compression, thin provisioning, those types of enterprise class features that you can take advantage of. Uh, so, as an infrastructure as a service provider, you're going to want to offer backups. Nobody wants, none of your tenants wants to come in the next day and find their uh, VDI instance not have the data it had the previous night when they left. Um, and what we are going to recommend to you is use Cinder for your boot volumes. Use Cinder snapshot to take a snapshot of your point in time, take a point in time copy of your Cinder volume, and then use Cinder backup for consistent backups. Now, when you do, when you use Cinder snapshot and Cinder backup in the way we recommend, you're going to get something that's going to be a consistent backup. So this is something that you can. Uh, use to bring up a VM from backup that is not crash consistent, that is actually file system consistent. So we will 
walk you through ba uh, Cinder, backup Cinder to Swift, which is the traditional way of doing things. So you may already be familiar with the Cinder volume service, and what that allows you to do is to provision and snapshot your, in, uh, your Cinder volumes, right? And in, the, in NetApp's terminology, that's called FlexClone. Flex clone. You can also use Cinder backup in conjunction to that, and this will allow you to backup to a Swift target. The better option may be for you to consider using an NFS target uh, with the Cloud Gateway. Uh, in the case of NetApp, the Cloud Gateway uh, is NetApp's Alta Vault. And Alta Vault gives you a significant advantage through deduplication, compression. And if you do choose to use encryption for security, that's something you can get to. Uh, in addition to that, you can also, in cloud appliances such as Alta Vault, uh, cache your most recent backups. So when you do want to restore from a backup, it's going to be faster. Now, in the case of AltaVault, you can backup through NetApp's ter petabyte scale object storage known as Storage Grid Web Scale. You can backup to AWS S3, Google, com uh, Google Cloud Storage, uh, Microsoft Azure, you name it. Most of it is covered as a backup target with AltaVault. Uh, there are reasons why you would want to use, uh, in some cases, the public cloud. Um, reason being that you want that kind of scalability, uh, that kind of elasticity that cloud infrastructures provide. Cinder backup configuration is extremely simple. Uh, you, if you're familiar with Cinder Conf, in the default stanza, you will either choose Swift or NFS. If you want to choose Swift, you just provide the backup driver as shown here. If you want to choose NFS, you change your backup driver, and then you need to also provide the backup share location. When you do provide, uh, there are a couple of additional options you need to provide if you do choose NFS. Those are listed over here. Now, on to backup commands. The first command, um, and the most important one, is backup create. Backup create uh, creates a backup that is not necessarily file system consistent, and you can do it incrementally as well. Backup delete uh, will delete a backup. Backup list lists all the backups. Uh, backup show will show the details of your backup, including a timestamp of a particular backup. You can restore from a backup using backup restore. Uh, you can export and import uh, your backups. Let's say uh, you have an availability zone with OpenStack deployed, and your availability zone goes down. If you have exported your backup backups, then you can bring up, uh, you can re-import those the backup metadata into another availability zone, and take advantage. You know, if you have something like an Alta Vault, you can take advantage of that backup target again. So the VM backup workflow to take a file system consistent backup will involve a file system agent on the VM. Uh, you have, you know, the VM is using an enterprise backend, and you do a Nova image create. Uh, that sends a request to CreaSIO to the file system agent. You then do, uh, and it creates a Cinder snapshot. Once you have that temporary Cinder volume snapshot, you can then take a Cinder, you can create a Cinder volume from that snapshot. And once you have that Cinder volume, you can create a backup from that Cinder volume using Cinder Backup Create. When you use Cinder Backup Create, again, you have that option to use a cloud gateway, uh, to use a backup gateway. You can then delete your Cinder, uh, uh, temporary Cinder volume, you can delete your temporary Cinder snapshot, and that's, how you have a consistent bug. I talked about consistency a bit, and the way we suggest you doing that is using a file system guest agent for consistent snapshots. If you recall from the previous slide, we take a snapshot first, we create a new center volume, and then we take a backup of that center volume. So in order to get a consistent snapshot first, let's say you're using KVM or Quemu, the default hypervisor, the most common hypervisor for OpenStack, and you have, you have to have your instance uh, have a Cremo guest agent. Uh, 
Uh, for further details on the gas agent, please refer to the reference on the bottom of the slide. The instance, of course, has a file system. The, uh, the Cremo gas agent gives you a freeze and thaw functionality that is going to uh, you know, create I/O accordingly for the snapshot. The Nova image create command sends a request to the hypervisor. The hypervisor in turn contacts the gas agent, which freezes the file system. Once the file system is frozen, Nova image create proceeds with creating the snapshot. Once the snapshot is created, uh, the hypervisor then notifies a the gas agent to thaw the file system. Once the file system is thawed, you, are, you now have a consistent snapshot and IO operations proceed uh, uh, like normal. I'm now gonna show you a demo. Uh, this, uh, this demo uses two NetApp products. Uh, it uses a product called NetApp Alt Vault, which is your backup gateway, and it uses another petabyte scale object storage called Storage Grid Web Scale. So going on with the demo. So this is again about 10 NVMs in a VDI type of environment. So we, let's say we have five VDI instances. And for each of those VDI instances, we have them on an enterprise backend, cluster data on top, for example. Those are your boot volumes. And we notice we have two NFS shares, the first share for the boot volumes and the second share for your backup target. Now let's take a look at CinderConf and what has been modified over there. All the changes were in the default stanza and the backup configuration is over there. We, we have, we're using the NFS driver and we are using that NFS export path. This was the same path you saw earlier in the demo. Okay, so these are some scripts that I've made and I'll make them available later today. Uh, this one creates backups, and you can use this in a scheduled job uh, to take backups. In order to use the script successfully, uh, you need to enable the Cremo gas agent, take a temporary image, that is taken care of it. Uh, get the temporary snapshot, that it does. Um, get the snapshot ID, create the backup. So it creates a backup for you once the guest agent is in place. Here is the schedule task um, using cron, and it takes a backup every 90 minutes. So if you do want to restore from a backup, then you know, let's say we you need to use a backup restore command, and we're restoring from the second to last backup in this case. So we do cinder backup restore, and we enter the backup ID. And if we do a cinder list, indeed we see that we have a new cinder volume that is being restored. So we're not gonna completely wait until the whole thing completes. Um, I'll save you that pain. Um, so this is a tenant VM, and what I've done here is we are periodically generating random content in order to make this a realistic demo. So we're going back to the OpenStack instance and we're going to use a script to sort all the backups of one of the tenant VMs. Let's go all the way back up uh, since the first backup. And the first backup was at 2201 UTC, which is 1801 EDT. And the second backup was at 2332 UTC 1132 EDT. So this is NetApp's Alta Vault, which is a cloud gateway, uh, which is a cloud backup gateway. And let's see what happens with deduplication and compression here. So after the first backup, that's our initial point, and the blue represents the normal consumed data that would happen. With Alta Vault, we're reducing that to 54, reducing that to 18.4 from 54 GB. So this is after just one backup of five VDI instances. Let's see what happens just before the fifth backup. In other words, after four backups. 
So I'm adjusting the window over here. And so this is after four backups. After the first backup, we see 2.96x in savings. Second, 5.86. After the third, 8.73. And after the fourth, we are up to 11.59. So we see a 10x space savings at that point in time. So, you know, this got me curious. So we, let's see what hap at what point in time we get to a 50x savings. So a 50x savings, uh, which means you're reducing one terabyte of data to 20 gigabytes, one terabyte to 20 gigabytes happens after just 18 backups. So that is uh, using NetApp's Alta Vault with storage grid web scale. And this exercise was done in the lab at NetApp. So you've seen a bit about tenant VMs, VDI instances, and center backups. So Kapil, what are you going to tell us? Yeah, I'm going to show you some enterprise applications and how do you do backups in them, and basically how do you deploy enterprise applications. And you can see the nice logo for Manila. So we based this demo on Manila and an SAP application, which is SAP HANA. So let's see how we deployed our uh, application. And this is an overview of how the deployment looks like. And you can see that on the right-hand side, we have the HANA nodes. So HANA nodes are basically Nova instances, and we have multiple HANA nodes. This means that we have deployed HANA in a multi-node environment. It's a scale-out architecture, and it's not just one host, but multiple nodes of the same database. And this is running, of course, on Nova. And on the left-hand side, you can see I have all the storage components. And Cinder and Glance are used to provide boot instances for my Nova instances, and sorry, boot volumes for my Nova instances. And Manila is used to provide NFS shares for HANA. And all the data that we have related to HANA is sitting on the Manila shares. You can see I have a shared share, I have data and log, which is a very regular uh, way to deploy uh, databases. And everything is sitting on Manila shares, uh, which is related to HANA. Let's move on and see how does the data path look. So basically, the data is correct, connected directly to, to the Nova instances using NFS. And you can see the HANA shares are directly connected using NFS. And in case of uh, the Nova instance boot volumes, we are using NFS or either iSCSI. In my case, the boot volumes are connected using NFS. And then the hypervisor exposes it as, the, uh, as a block device, right? Now for any enterprise application or any database, there is a very a similar way how you take backups. And, and that is also the case with HANA. So you would first quiesce your database or put it in a read-only mode. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with HANA as well. And I'm going to put it in a read-only mode, which is called HANA Snapshot. Once I do that, the database is actually ready to take backup, ready to take a storage-based snapshot. Once we do that, I'm going to take a snapshot of my Manila shares. And in this example, I am creating a consistency group out of all my Manila shares. So you can see I have three shares. Those would be data shares. And I'm creating a consistency group. Although HANA doesn't require me to have a consistency group, but in this example, I'm just trying to showcase the functionality. And uh, the advantage that I got out of that was um, all my data shares say there were two, so I did not have to take two snapshots. I just needed to take one snapshot. And imagine I have a huge clustered database and there are, there are multiple data shares involved, then it makes my job a little easier. And as a last step, I'm going to close the HANA snapshot. So closing HANA snapshot means telling the database, okay, my storage-based backup was completed, now you can go ahead and start regular operation from your side. So this is the backup workflow, and I'm going to show you in a demo how we do that, and also show you the recovery. So you can see these are my two uh, HANA instances, HANA OSK1 and 2, and these are the Manila shares.
And now this is the Manila CLI. I'm just listing the shares. And what I'm trying to show in the next couple of uh, seconds is that I've created a consistency group using Manila. And I have two data shares. And both these shares are part of the same consistency group. So I have the consistency group called HANA Data CG. And this is my first share. I'm just matching the IDs so that you can see that this is this, these two shares are part of the consistency group. So this is my second share, and it also has the same ID for the consistency group ID. So now that we have made that clear, uh, this is the HANA node, the Nova instance. And I'm just showing that we have mounted the Manila shares here. So these are all the shares, and they're mounted on my database node, both of them. And now we will log into our database. So our database is deployed, running, and we are creating some sample data. So for my test for recovery, I'm creating three tables. Uh, one is called region, the other is called sales, and there's one more called, I forgot the name. Yeah, so there are three tables, just some dummy data. Now that we have some data, let's look at the HANA UI. So this is basically an administration console, and the HANA database is running, all the services are running. We can see that there are two nodes, and all the services are green. And that's where you can actually start a backup. So I'm telling HANA, OK, I'm going to take a storage-based snapshot. You go ahead and prepare for that. So this is like a HANA snapshot or preparing HANA database. And we see that the HANA database is prepared. Now the next step is to actually take a storage-based snapshot, and that would be the consistency group snapshot. So I'm just taking the consistency group snapshot. It's just one single command, and my database is actually backed up. And the last step that we saw in the diagram, uh, we just need to make sure that the HANA database is aware that we took the backup. And we are just closing the snapshot and telling it uh, that the storage snapshot was successful, and it can register it. And as soon as we do that, you can see that that is the HANA backup catalog, and I have an available backup. And you can see the time that we took to take the backup was 55 seconds. And that is the advantage of a storage-based snapshot, right? Now let's try recovery. And what I'm going to do is I just deleted the sales table from my database. You can see there are just two tables now. Maybe that was by mistake. And now I want to go ahead and recover it. So I start recovery within the HANA Studio itself. And I have to provide my username and password, of course. And the HANA database is going to go down and start recovery process. So it's just collecting some data at the moment. And now it starts a wizard for me. And I select, OK, start my snapshot-based recovery. And I provide my log location. And now I can see, OK, these are the snapshot-based backups that are available. So what I need to do now is actually restore from the storage side. So I'm going to do a recovery of my consistency group snapshot. You can see that's the command to do that. Use the snapshot that we created. And then I have two new Manila shares, which need to be mounted on the HANA nodes. So I do that. As soon as my data, which was backed up, is available, it, shows, it starts showing green in my wizard. And now I can go ahead and start the recovery. So HANA is aware. Now the backup is on disk, and I can start recovery for this particular. And we start the recovery process. It takes some time, but here it is a little fast forwarded. Once that is completed, we can see that the database is back up. It, the, all the services are running. And now let's see if my sales table is back. You can see that the sales table is there, and also the content of the sales table exists. So our recovery was successful. So that was a simple backup recovery workflow of a database. And that is not the only use case that somebody needs in an enterprise storage, enterprise class application. Uh, we saw the use case where we use Snapshot. And that can help us actually to do a HANA dev and test or backup system creation. And that applies to all enterprise applications, including all SAP systems. And you use Manila Snapshot for that, right? And the Manila Replication technology, which we didn't showcase, but if we use the right tools from SAP and we use Manila Replication technology, we can solve the disaster recovery solutions 
uh, which we need in an enterprise class application. And the onboarding of uh, the traditional applications are enabled by features like replication and consistency groups, which are important for enterprise applications. And that was my enterprise application demo. And now, Akshay, can you tell us more about why really do we need backups? Exactly, that's a great point. So you've seen a couple of use cases, uh, VDI, tenant VM instances with Cinder, and SAP HANA using file shares uh, with Manila. But maybe you don't have these two applications, so does that mean you don't want to be taking backups? No, that's not the case. So you could have human errors, data corruption, application bugs, you name it. Uh, you want to be creating backups of your data, and uh, the only variable in consideration is how frequent do you want to keep these backups. What needs to be backed up? Pretty much any data you cannot afford to lose and your tenants cannot afford to lose. VM instances, databases, documents, files, logs of essential servers, things of that nature. So couple alluded to this earlier, replication and disaster recovery. Now this is a topic that is very related to backups. And in the case of Manila, we have introduced share replication in the Mitaka release. Share replication allows you to replicate a share, NFS or SIFS, from one availability zone to another. Or if you have a single availability zone, a single data center, you can do that too. You can replicate between multiple clusters in a single availability zone. But if you have only one cluster and you want to replicate between, uh, you replicate your shares within that one cluster, that is another option if you want to do that. Not particularly something you would do in the event of a disaster, but you can do that. Why do you want to use share replication? Non-disruptive non operations, right? So with multiple, uh, multiple availability zones, can provide for disaster recovery, and you can keep your clients running, uh, running and using their file shares. So with share replication in Manila, uh, you have, they make use of uh, the API, scheduler, and share services. So shown here is your first availability zone, and this is, let's say, in a replication domain. So in Manila context, replication works using this replication domain parameter in your configuration file. Let's say now you have a second availability zone sharing a common keystone infrastructure, then that availability zone has another storage backend and it has a share backend for that particular storage. When you issue a share replica create command, that goes to the API service uh, within your first availability zone. The API service then identifies a share backend that can fulfill that request to create a replica. Once the share backend uh, receives that replica, it contacts the storage in that availability zone the share is then replicated using the vendor's replication technology. In the case of NetApp, it's known as SnapMirror. Once the replication is complete, then the replica status is updated to av available in your OpenStack database. So that's what happens when you do a share replica create. In the case of Cinder, the story is evolving. So Cinder replication is available in SolidFire and some other vendors. If you do choose to make use of uh, SolidFire for your Cinder replication, then you also gain of some other advantages that SolidFire is gonna provide you. Deduplication in particular, compression, and you have that high performance solid state disk that you can make use of. In addition to that, Solid pro SolidFire provides you that minimum and maximum IOPS that you can set so you can have a guaranteed quality of service for your tenants, block storage. For uh, a Cinder replication, uh, we're gonna have it upcoming in Newton for cluster data on tap and E-series, and E-series. In the case of SolidFire, uh, you do replication by configuring a replication device as shown here. The first part of it with the backend ID is generic across backends, and everything after that is specific to your storage. So that's how you 
That's how your configuration file needs to be modified. Kapil mentioned this previously, like in the case of disasters, how do you ensure that you keep, that you, that you minimize downtime and you keep your enterprise running? Let's say you have a number of compute nodes and you have VMs, tenant VMs, and you have each of those tenant VMs has boot volumes, right? And these boot volumes are resident on a storage backend such as NetApp. You make use of storage side replication. In the case of NetApp's cluster data on tap, it's known as SnapMirror. You have, it replicates to a storage device in your second availability zone. And in the second availability zone, you have these uh, services running in hot, hot stand by Nova and Cinder. Let's say a disaster does occur, then what you do is you break that replication relationship, and then you bring up your VMs in your second availability zone. So you can also make use of storage-based replication for your glance image repositories. So this is similar to Cinder. Uh, you might have customized administrator images that you want to preserve, right? So you cannot allow, uh, you cannot afford to lose these images. You can have hundreds of images created by tenants, and they would not be happy uh, to find that their images are gone. You use roadside replication again. In the case of NetApp, it'll be SnapMirror, and there are significant efficiency gains that you can have. Like these technologies may use uh, compression. So that's gonna save you a lot of network bandwidth. In addition to that, uh, periodic snapshots will also be replicated over uh, in the case of cluster data on tap from NetApp. So we have touched on two applications. Uh, we have touched on SAP HANA as an application and we have touched on BDI as another use case. Um, that just got me thinking, what about general application design goals, including those for cloud native applications? Yeah, so as Akshay mentioned, we just talked about one application, which is enterprise applications, but there are lots of other applications which get deployed on an OpenStack cloud. So I just want to leave you guys with some thoughts around how would you deploy these applications, or what should you think about before considering backup for these applications. So the first and foremost point is to know, okay, there are three important storage projects in OpenStack. And whenever you're considering persistence of your storage, you should think about these three, right? Cinder for block storage, Manila for file share services, and Swift for object. And now let's look at some of the design goals. What should you actually do uh, when you are designing your applications? First and foremost, I would say that making your servers stateless is very important. What I mean by that is that all your ephemeral and reproducible data should be as part of your NOVA instances. And these instances should be stateless, and how you create these instances should be automated. So these are some of the DevOps principles as well. So basically, you are decoupling your software from your hardware, as well as your persistent storage from your non-persistent storage. Yeah? And when you automate your servers, um, you, you should also maintain them in a SEM or in get GitHub or, uh, so that you can document it really well. And when we talk about application backup, nobody else knows how to take a backup unless it's a backup tool or application itself. So you cannot just use Cinder backup or Nova backup, uh, Nova snapshot to take a backup of an application. You need something which can talk to the application. So it has to be a backup tool, or it has to be the developer who needs to provide an API which can put the application in a consistent mode or in a read-only mode, so to say, right? So it's important to consider backup tools when you are taking backups. And another DevOps principle I would like to mention is monitoring. Yes, it is important to take backups, and you would, of course, schedule all these backups. In my demo, I showed the one backup and one restore, but you would, of, of course, schedule them and, and create a script and create a cron job like Akshay did, right? But it is also important to monitor them and see if the, you have recoverable backups available all the time. And lastly, once you make your server stateless and once you automate the process and also separate your persistence storage, what it enables you is to do automated recovery as well, because your storage is separated, 
and you can also replicate it, for example. And on the other side, you can also create, use the same scripts to create your new systems, right? So it enables automated recovery for you. So now let's look at how does the picture look when we talk about all kinds of data, right? And what, does go, what goes inside NOVA? So I talk about ephemeral data. So what, what is that? Basically reproducible data, your images, your binaries, which are static data that goes into your ephemeral storage. And of course, NOVA, uh, sorry, Cinder and Manila and Swift, these are the persistent storage projects. And what do you store in them? Of course, application data, configuration files, your logs, and in case of Swift, your object storage, right? And why are we doing this decoupling? And how can it enable us? Basically, this makes your application mobile. It makes it platform independent, so to say, right? So once you have segregated your persistent and non-persistent storage, you can move your application from one platform to another or one technology to another. And how you do that? It's very simple. Because your data is segregated, you can write new automation scripts to provision your servers or your compute, for example, using new technologies like containerized technologies, Kubernetes or Magnum. So if we use such principles and in, in the new age where you have multiple clouds, multiple new technologies coming up, it makes a lot of sense to, to be able to segregate these data and provide mobility to your applications. So that's what I wanted to leave you with. Uh, thank you so much. Akshay, you want to say something before um, we leave? Sure. Uh, so on behalf of NetApp, uh, Kapil and myself, thank you for staying here till the end of the day. If you do want to meet with some of our executives, uh, please schedule a VIP meeting with us. Um, follow us on Twitter, and uh, please visit netapp.github.io to get more information. That's where our OpenStack details are posted. Thanks again. You guys uh, have uh, integration with Horizon that you can probably do one click kind of backups of a VM or particular volume. Um, I know it's not very difficult at the same time, have you done it? So I personally didn't use Horizon for the backups, but what I can do for you is using the CLI, um, you know, my experience has been that we don't get a time ordered series of backups, not yet. So I will be making a script, a few scripts available later today, and that's gonna give you a time-ordered series of backups. Um, but uh, regarding Horizon, that's something. Okay, you wanna talk? So uh, usually you would not click backup uh, and say back it up. Usually they are scheduled. Uh, but of course, all the backup tools provide that. Uh, that was something I wanted to mention. So it is not a very critical function, usually, because the backup functionality is usually provided by the uh, administrators. But it could also be a click-in backup, which is a good point, I would say. But I, we don't have, we didn't play around with possibility no. of that. Right. Yeah, you're right, yeah. It looks cool, I would say. <laughs> it's, it's nicer to do a demo with, with that instead of the CLI. <laughs> so definitely it does look cool. Uh, the thing with uh, doing it via Horizon is that um, we wanted to showcase a case where you have a very consistent backup that uh, is not necessarily going to be crash consistent, that is going to be uh, something that can bring up your center volumes uh, in a state that can be used immediately. So 
That's why we went this way. And in order to do that, we had to actually take a snapshot, you know, and then we had to take a, create a temporary center volume, then create a backup of that volume. So that's, how we, that's why we went through this road. One more update. I know you mentioned that you had to do snap mirror based replication across sites. Is the replication is supported in Manila as only backend device capability that it's relegated to the storage array? Or is it something that Manila itself can do? Or both? Right. So, right now, Manila replication uh, is available in NetApp and other storage vendors will be adding that capability. So what, what happens is, and we do have a developer here, uh, what happens is the Manila replication command does use a vendor, uh, an enterprise vendor command that will do replication, right? So in the case of NetApp, it's SnapMirror, exactly. It's got to be a backend provider's capability. It's not native to Manila, but it is a capability that's providing and it's using that backend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no any any other questions, and thank you so much.